Well, let's shift our focus now over to the cattle markets. This week, we caught up with one of our regular cattle market analysts. We traveled out to Briggs Feed Yard near Seward on Wednesday to catch up with Mike Briggs. This week on Market Journal, we are talking the cattle markets with Mike Briggs out here at Briggs Feed Yard. Mike, great to see you. Nice to see you guys. It's been a while. Got my papers flying all over this morning. A little, little breezy. breezy. Little Not breezy. too bad, though. Let's talk about the most recent cattle on feed report that came out. What were some of the numbers that stuck out to you? You know, really they didn't, they were kind of all as expected. You're going to see placements down because there's just not the supply of feeder cattle that we've had. Marketing's, you know, yeah, you'd like to see that a little better, but if you look at the on feed, they can't be real big because there's not as many cattle on feed. You're under that 100% level, so, and you're going to stay there for quite some time. Yeah, it seems like a few people were picking out the, the weights of the cattle and, and noticing a trend there, uh, light cattle headed to the feedlots. Well, you've got grain that's extremely high, our margins for what we're putting it on and what we're getting are very slim. It does not pay to overfeed your cattle. And you've had a lot of weather effects, especially on the poor guys out west. I say that kind of tongue in cheek. We've had a lot of bad winters where they've gotten away scot free and they're really getting pounded. And I feel bad for them because, and those cattle are not gonna, not gonna weigh because they've been burned up from the cold and it's, the weight's not gonna be there. And I think it's gonna continue not being there. So that's gonna make, so you're going to have less animals and they're going to be smaller and you're going to be putting less pounds of beef on the market. This gets to a bit of a herd rebuilding question, but how long do you think we'll continue to see cattle on feed numbers uh, kind of where they're at now below 100%? All depends on mother nature and whether or not it rains. If it rains, you're going to see ranchers keep back heifers like crazy and then the supply really gets small because you don't have any heifers in the feed mix. But until it rains, it can last indefinitely. Well, let's talk about the cattle markets as you see them here in the middle of the week. Kind of had a, a rough start or rough as of late in the cattle complex for March. What's going on? Well, you know, we thought we were, this was going to be our turn and yet now we got a little black swan fluttering in there staring in our face. The, you know, the always intelligent bankers are having a little problem in this banking system. Mm -hmm. If this banking system were to roll over and you have some kind of contagion, it's going to crush the economy, therefore it crushes the demand, and they'll just beat the dog out of these cattle. Now, the, what you all have going in your favor that's going to be in our favor is you've got fundamentals on your side. You do not have a lot of fat cattle, you're not going to have a lot of fat cattle, but you got to have demand. And this is this has frightened people a little bit. It's also the wrong time of the year. It's still too cold. It's got to warm up. We need to get into April, have the grills come out, and I think you'll see some better demand, provided the economy's not falling over into the abyss. I want to talk more about that because as you mentioned the fundamentals seem to be that they're all there but it's this outside pressure weighing on the market. You tie most of not all that to the the banking uh, situation right now what else might be impacting that? Well that and inflation, fuel prices, all these other things that are pulling money out of people's pockets. The the amount of free cash that these people have has getting smaller and it continues to get smaller so Demand is where it all lies. So I'm hoping as we get into April, May, June, things settle out a little bit with the economy, smooth out a little bit. People help get a little exuberance, want to go outside, want to pull out the grills and demand comes with it. Then we'll have, then we'll have an opportunity here. Think we might have found a bottom for the live and feeder cattle on the future side? I think we're close, once again, depending on the market. But it's, it's interesting, this whole, this whole cattle market is going to depend on cash. Cash is going to have to drive this thing. The board is not going to drag us up. In fact, right now it's kind of dragging us down and the Packers playing these little games with, well, I'm going to clean coolers this week so I don't need so many cattle and all that, how they manage their supply. So we need the pull through from the consumer so that the Packer has to buy cattle, then we can get something done. Mike, I want to step away kind of from the, the cattle markets and talk about some cattle news, so to speak. Last time you were on, we talked about RFID, RFID ear tags. Yep. This time, USDA has come out with some rules about country of origin labeling, kind of a voluntary label, but tightening down uh, how that is administered. Your thoughts on that? You know, I, I've always questioned the country of origin labeling because you add expense to the system and that expense comes at the expense of the producer because we're the ones that have to put in the EID tags. The paperwork has got to go with the animals so you can trace them but I am totally in favor of traceability of our, in our industry. Guys fight it, and it's because they don't want the government having all their numbers. Well, I would rather have all that, all that information housed by a private business. It's contained, everybody can't get to it because it's not in the government sphere. 
I'm all for it as far as traceability. So if we have an animal health issue, we can trace it down, find it, and contain it. And right now we don't have that, and I think that is just really bad business on our part because you get something like foot and mouth rolling, it can bring down the whole industry, and it doesn't need to if you know where it came from and you can contain it. All right, so as we begin to wrap up our time, Mike, what's your biggest concern out there right now for a feedlot owner? <laughs> wow, that's hard to narrow to one because we got a lot of dark clouds rolling around here with the economy, but probably that and Mother Nature. Mother Nature needs, it needs to rain. I believe the drought's over. The La Nina's dying. It's almost dead. That's what's caused our drought, not global warming. And I think we're going to get some rain here and we can start rebuilding the herd until we rebuild the herd and get more numbers, it's gonna be a real struggle in the feed yard to keep capacity. And if you can't keep capacity, it's pretty hard to make any money. Give you the final word this week, what do you wanna leave us with? Things are gonna get better, I believe, but don't run around like a drunken sailor and think there's never gonna be another bad day because that's when you get killed. But think, think we got a good summer, we got a good spring in front of us, I think. Mike, we appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. you.